and passion. We respect you so much for what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You didn't get distracted, you bought in in very short order, and you came out and you won a football game on the road. I couldn't be more proud of everybody and my coaches and what they had to go through to get you ready to win a football game on the road. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan. After Notre Dame's upset loss to Duke, Coach Kelly said he wanted his team to play with more passion, more energy, and yes, have some fun on the football field. There is no question the Irish had some fun during their 50-33 win over Syracuse on Saturday. One of new defensive coordinator Greg Hudson's main duties this past week was to help bring passion and energy back to the Irish defense. He did his job well and was rewarded by the players with the honor of singing the Notre Dame Victory March in the locker room after the win. Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners. Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. St. Brown has a step, breaks a tackle, has that to start things off for the Fighting Irish. Hard to get off to a better start than you did with the 79-yard catch and run by Equinemius. Yeah, I mean, it was a great split of the defenders. They were in cover uh, one, so the middle of the field was closed. But, um, you know, EQ used some great speed, got through the defender, and um, again, a great way. You know, on noon start, you always worry about getting off to that, you know, good start. And offensively, we were rolling right out of the gates. First Syracuse possession, it reminded me of taking on a triple option team. Clearly, that first drive by Syracuse, your guys were having a little trouble adjusting to the speed of their offense. Yeah, it was the speed and it was also the recognition of some sets. You know, they were in some no-back sets and we did not get some of the checks um, made that needed to be made. And so uh, we were vulnerable in some, some middle uh, read uh, passes that they had. So it took us uh, a series to get them on the sideline, make some adjustments. We were able to make up for that in, in the next couple of series. In a 50-point game, this may be forgotten, but Syracuse didn't get the momentum they wanted after their first touchdown because Jerron Jones blocked another extra point and Cole Luke returned it for two more. Yeah, and the effort by, by the blocking downfield, I think, uh, you know, Julian Love was, was uh, you know, instrumental in getting Cole Luke. I gave Cole a hard time. I said it took about 15 seconds for you to score on that play. We needed to hold a lot of blocks, but that's the second time we've returned a, a blocked extra point. That's just the extra effort, you know, that, that you need. And those were two big points, and it, uh, it definitely made a difference. Now, fans across the country thought it was fun to watch. It was a shootout. Syracuse answered with a touchdown, and then you come right back with the 93-yard C.J. Sanders kickoff return for touchdown. And beautifully executed. Uh, we had a great look at it earlier, and I thought we missed the seam. And so we had a little conversation on the sideline that if we did the same thing, executed it, held our blocks that there'd be a nice seam for him. He did a nice job of winding it, setting it up, and then hitting the seam. It was a beautifully executed play. Now Syracuse scored one more time, a long drive that started in the first quarter, ended early in the second quarter, but until the fourth quarter, when a penalty helped them extend a drive, that was their last extended drive of the game. Yeah, a lot of three and outs, and I think what I liked about it was our third down production was outstanding. We got off the field on third down. I thought we did a great job of, of you know, stopping the run uh, and then forcing them into some predictable things on third down. And we mixed up our coverage as well. We played uh, above the cut. In other words, we kept the ball in front of us. It's the kind of defense that we, we, we want to see and continue to work towards being that kind of defense that can disrupt the ball uh, and, and get off the field on third down. 
Kaiser off play action looking for the home run out in front drops it in perfectly to the freshman Kevin Stefferson for a walk in touchdown. Two more big scores in the third quarter. The first one, you had it earlier in the game, and Kaiser overthrew it a little bit, but the 54-yard pass to Kevin Steffers. Yeah, we had it earlier. We knew we were going to get it again. We just had to wait for the right opportunity. Uh, it's a play-action pass, and uh, it was called on first down, which we, you know, we were a heavy run on first down. We went back to the play-action on first down. The corner got his eyes inside. We got outside him, and great throw, great catch. You said publicly Dexter Williams has to be on the field more, and he proved it on just a spectacular 59-yard touchdown run. Yeah, we wanted to get the ball outside, and they angled right into the run and, and uh, didn't have a good look, reversed his field, got a nice block from uh, Deshaun Kaiser, and the rest is uh, athleticism. He, he took it uh, all the way to the house. It was a nice run by Dexter. Now, you only scored three points in the fourth quarter, but you put together two drives that ate up nine and a half minutes. Yeah, I think the last drive over six minutes, we got into the four-minute offense. I told uh, our coaches, listen, let's just you know, get into a mode here where we can end this football game. And it got to the point where, um, you know, Syracuse ran the ball on their last possession. And anytime you get a spread offense to decide to run the football to end the game, you know that you effectively have done your job. TV caught one of the more athletic and physical chest bumps by an assistant coach ever in Greg Hudson. What role did he play this week? How did he fit in? How did he help your defense? He helped with the energy and the enthusiasm. You know, he doesn't obviously have a full grasp of what we're doing defensively. We left that to Mike Elston, and Mike did a great job of really putting things together behind the scenes. Um, but, you know, it's not just about the X's and the O's, although that was a very important role that Mike fulfilled for us, and he deserves a lot of credit. Uh, Greg really uh, needed to bring the energy, the passion, the enthusiasm back to our group, and uh, they all worked very, very well together. What are you most pleased about the way your team handled the week leading into the Syracuse game and the game itself? It's sometime you got to handle adversity, and, and we had some adversity. You know, anytime you have a void of leadership and some new people are coming in, uh, they have to help uh, in that void. And I think our kids showed great maturity, and they went to work. They did everything we asked them to do. So I think that's probably what I was most proud of. They showed great maturity, great poise, and then went out and played the game and executed uh, in a manner that allowed us to win. Have you determined in your head what your theme's gonna be for this team this week? Yeah, I mean, I think more than anything else, this is a team that has to play with heart. It's gotta play with that, you know, one heartbeat. Everybody's playing together. If we do that and have some fun and understand that, you know, we've got to play better football as a whole in all phases, uh, but play with heart, play with one heartbeat, we'll be in pretty good shape. Senior linebacker James Onwalu came to Notre Dame as a highly decorated wide receiver out of St. Paul, Minnesota. But James has always liked the physical side of the game, and after some success on special teams his freshman year, he asked to switch to defense, a switch that has gone so well he is now a Notre Dame captain. But James would not be where he is now if he had not made an even bigger switch earlier in his athletic career. My whole family soccer family. My dad came to the U.S. to play soccer with his brothers, and uh, so I grew up playing soccer. You know, I wanted to be like my older brother who had been playing football, so ended up signing up for football, and uh, it all started from there. And Fronapple scrambles, buys some time, and then will be sacked back at midfield. It's on Walu that makes the sack. I started out as a running back, played running back all growing up. Midway through my junior year, you know, I was on a streak of scoring on the first play, maybe three or four games in a row. And uh, I started thinking about, you know, what I might want to do and uh, taking it to the next level. As people started asking me about it more, I never really thought about it before. Coming in as a freshman, I was just trying to get on the field no matter what. And, uh, you know, I had some guys that were older than me in the wide receiver room that really influenced me to take special teams seriously. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I was, I was grinding with Coach Booker to, you know, really make an impact on special teams. Seeing myself more as a physical player, thinking that it could be really benefit me at a different position. So walked up to Coach Kelly's office and had a man-to-man -man conversation and uh, ended up on the defense side of the ball. The defense side of the ball is a little bit different than offense. Offense, you know what's gonna happen. You can kind of go through it in your mind, but defense, you don't know what they're gonna try to throw at you. So it, it was a little bit of a whirlwind my sophomore year trying to figure out and you know get settled in. And I was playing next to two really good linebackers. So those two really helped me, Joe and Jalen, uh, playing with those guys for a couple years, you know, helped me grow up pretty fast. 
Go Cal, we set these boys up. I tried to be the best leader I could be, and I ended up actually getting captain. Uh, I was surprised, and you know, you could never imagine being a captain of a team at a university like this. So when it actually happens, I mean, the, the words really can't explain it. I think the linebackers have gotten really close this year. We all have kind of the same goals, so we want to stay you know, focused in school and get, get our schoolwork done, but at the same time want to be the best linebackers in the country. I feel blessed to have such great guys around me and great guys to lead. James Wallow is a consistent and a resilient player. Uh, I think I've always given my all for this university and for my teammates and uh, try to just execute my job to the best of my ability. You know, every time you get an opportunity to run out of that tunnel, it's, it's truly a blessed opportunity. Playing for Notre Dame is an honor. I uh, never thought I'd be at a great university like this and playing for such a great school and with such great guys every single day. So uh, I think it's an experience that you cannot match at any other university. Uh, you know, being challenged in school, being challenged in football and being surrounded by, you know, some of the top people in the world. It's been an unbelievable experience. Favorite all-time movie? Remember the Titans. First car you ever drove? Dodge Ram truck. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? I love the fly fish. What is your favorite spot at Notre Dame? The grotto. Get up early or sleep in? Get up early. Player on the team most like you? Tyler Newsom. What is your pregame routine? Uh, well, we eat and then uh, I kind of listen to music, go in the corner, kind of just chill out by myself for a little bit. Best player to room with on the road? James on Waller. Best singer on the team? Niles Morgan. Best dancer on the team? Uh, Jonathan Jones. Best comedian on the team? Ooh, Jay Hayes, yeah. Best dresser on the team? Toy Hunter. Worst dresser on the team? Tyler Newsom. Player on the team most likely to become a football coach? Got me a Van Gorder. Best thing about playing for Notre Dame? Uh, tradition, guys I get to play with, and winning. Greer Martini, you've just completed, assisted somewhat, the 60-second drill on Thank inside you. Notre Dame football. Thank you. Thanks, Niles. Yeah. Before the season began, Notre Dame and Bleacher Report entered into an exclusive social media partnership that is providing the large Bleacher Report audience with weekly outstanding behind-the-scenes coverage of the Notre Dame football program. If you haven't checked it out yet, I recommend that you do because it has been terrific. For example, last week, Bleacher Report posted the story of 18-year-old Peter Zinsley, a leukemia survivor who had his dream of meeting the Notre Dame football team granted. We've got Peter from our Make-A-Wish Foundation is here, a very special young man, and one of his wishes in the Make-A-Wish Foundation was to meet the Notre Dame football team. We're going to make it even more special for him. My first question when I when my parents said I had leukemia was, am I going to die? I was diagnosed on January 4th of 2012. I had just turned 13 and I had a spot in my eye. So I was just having trouble watching cartoons. In the morning, I took him to his pediatrician down in Manhattan Beach. She ran a blood scan at that time, looked at it under a microscope. She had to sit down. She said, just uh, go to the emergency room right now. <laughs> they told us it was leukemia. Not a great day. Peter responded to the chemo and within 10 days they said he was at zero cancer cells. Then it was he has to do three and a half years of chemo and so now it's all about not damaging his organs. Three months into treatment he had had an allergic reaction to one of his chemotherapy drugs and it shut down uh, his pancreas. The doctors came in and said, well, hopefully it's not necrotizing pancreatitis because that means it's killing itself. And then the next doctor came in and said, well, you have necrotizing pancreatitis and there's nothing we can do. It was the most fatal side effect he could have gotten. He could not eat or drink for 10 days. pancreas um, stopped Stable. killing itself and that was a miracle you know I felt so lucky since I finished treatment uh, and I reached remission I have really just focused on being like a normal high schooler Make-A-Wish approached me many times throughout my treatment and I immediately thought of Notre Dame football standing on the sidelines uh, during a football game um, and it's been better than I could have imagined 
we're going to make it even more special for him. We're going to let him throw a pass. Oh, stands if I come to a home game I'd see what I'd feel like are my teammates and it's amazing. To make sure you don't miss any of Bleacher Report's coverage of Notre Dame football this season just download their app. Inside Notre Dame football returns right after this. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com question of the week for Coach Kelly. This week's question comes from Thorsten Ballhorn of Bottrop, Germany. Coach, I know you played in Dublin a few years ago. Are there any plans for the Irish to play a game in Europe again in the future? When we look at the venues, um, uh, Europe is definitely one of them. Um, I know we've talked about Italy. Uh, we've talked about going back to Ireland. Uh, so nothing has been uh, contracted yet, but uh, I can tell our fans in Europe that uh, we haven't forgotten you. And uh, if we can put the right package together with the right team, uh, we'll be back to see you soon. Next up for the Irish, a trip to Raleigh, North Carolina to face ACC opponent, North Carolina State. The Wolfpack beat previously unbeaten Wake Forest this past Saturday to improve their record to three and one on the season. NC State is solid on both sides of the ball and currently ranks 21st in the country in both total defense and total offense. Uh, very nice players on both sides of the ball and they run the ball effectively, 200 yards rushing. Uh, so it's a well-balanced football team. They've got good athletes. Finley, a quarterback, is uh, six foot four, can see the field. They've got a host of wide receivers uh, that are all athletic and uh, do a really good job of going up and get the football. And then defensively, I like their front seven. Uh, very athletic, big, strong, physical players. Um, we've got a great challenge and it'll be a, a hostile environment uh, in Raleigh. It's the first time we've been down there. Um, so we'll have to step our game up and play better football. Um, and, and I know our guys will be up for the challenge. That will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football. The Inside Notre Dame Football staff will travel with the team to Raleigh next week and will return with all the highlights of the Notre Dame NC State game. Until then, thanks so much for watching and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also brought to you by Bank of America, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.